everyone. Tony Lapatina back with you, along with my partner, Karen Bentley. Um, you've heard us talk about um, natural sugars and artificial sweeteners, hopefully, in some of our previous videos. Uh, one of the ones that we've talked about, but not in great detail, is saccharin. And most of you will know saccharin as this little pink envelope here that ha you have in restaurants and diners and even at home uh, to sweeten your beverages more often than not. But this is found in many other places. And today, Karen's gonna elaborate on that a bit, talk about how safe saccharin is or isn't, and you know what kind of choices you should make when it comes to this product. Take it away, Karen. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to be talking about saccharin, known uh, primarily, as Tony mentioned, by the brand name Sweet and Low since 1957. This has been a known brand name. Um, it's also known as Sugar Twin and Sweet Twin. Have you ever seen that, Tony, in your grocery stores? I you have. know, it's funny. I, Sugar Twin, yes. Not Sweet Twin, Sweet Twin, but I know, I've heard Sugar Twin in the past. Yeah, I remember those, those that. All, yeah, those are also saccharin, but just different brand names. Mm -hmm. um, Tony, what does the name saccharin mean to you? If I said Tony is a saccharin guy, am I saying something nice about you? Sweet. Sweet. Or overly sweet. I'm not oh, sure which. Sweet. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I'm not paying you a compliment. Maybe not. <laughs> you know, that you're, you're just too sweet. And um, it's sort of a derogatory term. And, and that's because saccharin is a 300 to 400 times sweeter than sugar. That's how saccharin got that name. Wow. It's actually very, very sweet. And um, we're going to taste it now and give our own opinions. <laughs> You're going to taste it and I'm going to taste it. So Okay. This is get my, get my, my little pink packet open here. It doesn't, it looks, uh, the color is like sugar, but it's finer mold. It's, it's a, uh, it's not quite as granular, but I'm going to taste it too. Yeah, okay. here we go. What do you think? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Taken directly like that, I do not like it. <laughs> Even that like little bit either. that was on my finger. No, thank you. <laughs> I didn't like it either. I tasted, um, I don't know. I, I, it wasn't a, a, a sugar twin for me. <laughs> mm -mm. It was not pleasant. A little dab of sugar like that would have been okay. Yeah, I, I didn't particularly care for it myself. Um, also, uh, I, I didn't notice it when I did my own taste test, but it, if you eat a lot of saccharin, um, it's supposed to leave a metallic aftertaste in your mouth. And I've heard that. That's why it's not used in many products by itself. When you see saccharin used commercially, um, it's usually used with another sweetening agent to disguise the metallic taste. Mm. And what you'll see it in is a lot of uh, healthcare products, vitamins and minerals, and some medicines have saccharin, and some candies use saccharin. It's, uh, it's not used in drinks. It's not really used in a lot of foods, but uh, it can be because it's heat stable. That means you can cook with it. You can cook and bake, yeah. Yeah, you can use it for cooking if you want, um, but it's uh, it, it measures half to sugar. So one cup of sugar is uh, one half cup of saccharin. So it's uh, twice as strong as sugar and it doesn't measure like sugar, but you can use it. Um, it has no nutritive value. It, it technically has two calories per serving, but uh, that's so low, it, uh, the, the FDA allows um, sweet and low to say it's got no calories mm -hmm. and, um, and it doesn't digest or metabolize. So your body doesn't mm -hmm. recognize it as a food. So you, uh, pee and poop it out. It just <laughs> goes through and out. <laughs> Serves no useful food. purpose. <laughs> um, so saccharin is the granddaddy of all artificial sweeteners. Tony, Artificial means what to you? When we use the term artificial, what does that mean? It means man-made or chemically based or both. Exactly. So it's not natural. Natural means that it comes from a plant or an animal source. And saccharin is not natural. It's artificial. It does come from a chemical source. It was discovered in 1879 by a Russian chemist working at Johns Hopkins University. 
and he had some kind of accident. Um, some either got on his hand or got in his food. I've heard different stories. And anyway, he ended up tasting it, which doesn't seem very scientific. <laughs> no, nor safe. <laughs> you must wonder about this guy. Yeah, a little. <laughs> But um, after, after tasting it, he realized it was really sweet. And, um, and that really started a whole new uh, life for him, a uh, very wealthy life. Um, mm -hmm. He ended up taking the patents on the product, even though he was working with another guy at Johns Hopkins. He went off to Germany and took the patents and got filthy rich on um, saccharin. And uh, the, the guy he left behind at Johns Hopkins said of him, Falberg is a scoundrel. It nauseates me to hear my name mentioned in the same breath with him. So there was a, a little bitterness there. And yeah, no love lost between them, I'm sure. But um, Tony, saccharin was controversial from the start. It, it first came into our food, food supply right around 1900. It was controversial from day one. Do you have any idea why? Just the, I don't know, no, not really. Maybe just the fact that it resulted from uh, some chemical combination that was um, sort of accidental. That's a great guess. <laughs> it's because um, it was, it's a derivative of coal tar. Oh. Coal tar, yes, I said that right. That's not a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, wow. guy, the guy who was the head, they, they now, you know, you use the, um, the chemical name benzoic sulfamide, but it's coal tar derivative. Don't be fooled. Um, you're not going to see coal tar in uh, uh, on the box here. <laughs> I guess not. Um, so the guy who was uh, the head of the FDA in 1907, he uh, started an investigation into the the healthiness of saccharin, and he thought it was an illegal substitute for sugar. He wanted to get it banned. He was really on a mission, but he came up against one of our presidents, Teddy Roosevelt. Oh. And Teddy Roosevelt was a type two diabetic. That's uh, the kind of diabetic who uh, uh, needs to be careful with the sugar consumption. And he was a big saccharin fan because he Boy. could sweeten his foods without you know, raising his blood sugar. And he thought it was great. And he said, anybody who says saccharin is injurious to health is an idiot. <laughs> huh, what a well-qualified source. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, this was just the start of interference by US presidents in um, food substances, as you shall see as we go along here. Okay. Uh, in 1911, there was the next attempt to ban with food inspection decision number 135 uh, stated that foods containing saccharin were adulterated and weren't to be allowed. But then in 1912, it was reversed. Um, uh, the food inspection decision 142 said saccharin was not harmful. <laughs> the, the FDA has been wrestling with this for a long time. Uh, Apparently. It didn't really get popular until the wars, until World War I and especially World War II when sugar was scarce and expensive mm -hmm. and people started using saccharin. So that's when it really kicked into gear. And by 1970, um, 17 million pounds of saccharin a year were being consumed, which is Whoa. quite good. Wow. Then um, a, a little piece of history in there. In 1958, the FDA was mandated there was a law from Congress that they could not approve substances that induce cancer in man or after tests found that it induces cancer in animals. So the FDA was mandated to ban any substance that uh, was found to induce cancer in animals or in people. And in the 1970s, there was a bunch of studies that linked uh, cancer in lab, ran, lab rats, lab rats to um, saccharin. Uh -huh. So uh, in 1977, the FDA made yet another attempt to ban saccharin and they couldn't get it banned, but they got a warning label uh, to be used on all saccharin products. Remember uh, uh, warning labels on cigarettes? Yes. 
Well, there was a warning label. If you bought this box of Sweet and Low um, after 1977, you would have seen a warning label, which if you look, it's not there now, but the warning label said, use of this product may be hazardous to your health. This product contains saccharin, which has been determined to cause cancer in laboratory animals. And like I said, kept it, going. It, it disappeared. And, and it was there until 2000 when yet another American president got into the scene. This time it was Bill Clinton, <laughs> who uh, uh, as he was walking out the door, he unbanned the warning label on saccharin. Oh. Uh, apparently you can pardon um, food substances. You can pardon. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I want to see the wording on that. <laughs> um, the, uh, I, he, uh, apparently it wasn't totally whimsical. There was new findings that uh, the cancer uh, it doesn't happen in humans. It only happens in rats because of a different biology. And so it wasn't fair for the FDA to uh, put this warning label on. And so... Um, Anyways, Bill Clinton got the ball rolling. And when we talk about aspartame and some other substances, we'll be talking about other presidents. It's not just uh, Democrats who can be swayed. <laughs> maybe a big donation to the Clinton Foundation, but- um, <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Anyways, uh, in 2000, the US Department of Health and Human Services uh, removed saccharin from the list of carcinogens. In uh, 2001, the FDA reversed its position on saccharin, and in 2010, the EPA officially removed saccharin from the list of hazardous commercial chemical products. So all those important agencies are now saying it's safe, plus it was unbanned in 100 countries. Oh. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, and, and here's what the current position is on saccharin. Um, it's uh, the International Agency for Research on Cancer. This is their position on saccharin, that it's in group 2B, which means it's possibly carcinogenic to humans. But it ex it, uh, the circumstance entails exposures that um, there is less than sufficient evidence of carcinogenity in experimental animals. Um, and when there is inadequate evidence in humans, but there is sufficient evidence in experiment. I mean, it just it just talks in double talk. Um, uh, the fact remains that many other carcinogenic molecules have long been known to be ubiquitous, ubiquitously present in foods and drinks, but you have to. It, but their effects on vital tissue are dose dependent. So, for example, um, what might be something that we eat that could have a carcinogenic effect on us that hasn't been banned, Tony. Uh, one has to do with your grill. <laughs> the um, the uh, burnt part of uh, the meat that you grill. Exactly. <clears throat> the meats that we grill could have carcinogenic properties. Um, also nitrates and uh, mm. uh, nitrites, they might have carcin carcinogenic properties. Uh, the tannins that we drink in teas and in wines might have carcinogenic properties. So they're saying that, that the saccharin is more like those foods where you have to eat a huge dose of it to uh, make it carcinogenic. And in fact, one study said that you would need to drink 812 ounce cans of a soda sweetened with saccharin to reach the dose that was used to induce cancer in rats. So. So there you have it. Uh, the most frequent complaints, I was looking for complaints about saccharin. The, I was trying to do a recent one on, um, on the Google machine. And it, what they were minor complaints, um, irritability, insomnia, muscular problems, but temporary ones. Um, I didn't see a big uh, wide, um, there wasn't a big flutter of complaints mm. out there. And also this product has been on the market for over a hundred years. And if people were dying, we would know it. True. You know, so if they're dying, they're dying quietly. <laughs> yeah. Or if they did die of cancer, the, the root cause was never known. 
you exactly. know, how they got the cancer in the first place. Exactly. It's very hard to isolate. You know, when mm. I um, when I go in for uh, uh, medical exams, nobody's asking me what uh, artificial sweeteners I'm eating. They're asking me what vitamins do I take, maybe. Right. And, uh, you know, that's about it. So if I drop dead and it was saccharin, nobody's ever going to know. <laughs> <laughs> Saccharin's going to get away with it. Yep. Um, so the bottom line, is it safe? Uh, it probably is safe, but we... But uh, as we are with all sweetening agents, we have to be careful about the dose. And um, we're going to limit the dose of any sweetening agent to one, one tablespoon ideal, two tablespoons max per day. So two tablespoons max per day of saccharin or any other sweetening agent is all you wanna give yourself. And then you're gonna fly below the radar of um, you know whether you're close enough to uh, be inducing something bad to happen to you. Also, my personal preference is I didn't particularly like the taste, so that would exit out for mm -hmm. me. But also, look, there's so many other choices now about what I, you can do. I was just going to say that. I mean, why take the risk exactly. if there's any risk at all when there are so many other choices out there exactly. that are proven to be less harmful, if not at all harmful. That, weren't, that didn't have a warning label. Right, uh, ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and, um, you know, you don't have to worry that the uh, test results have been interpreted correctly or not. And, um, you know, and that measures more uh, exactly like sugar. You know, this one you have to farts with to get the measurements right. So my vote would be to... Um, make another choice. But if you're gonna use this one, if you love it, if you've been using it for years, um, no more than two tablespoons a day. And that will- keep Ta wait, Sorry, table or tea? Table. Tablespoons. That's a, lot. That's, that's a lot, that's six teaspoons. Yeah. That's a lot. So and that's real teaspoons, not sugar equivalent teaspoons. Real teaspoons. Yeah. So you should be able to keep yourself happy on that if that's your, yeah. that's, that's the substance you like. Yeah, just moderate. Exactly. Everything in moderation. Everything. <laughs> okay, folks, I hope uh, that was helpful. If you liked it, please hit the like button. And yes. if you really liked it, hit our sub subscribe button. And uh, we'll be doing some more of these on aspartame and sucralose and erythritol. So come back for more. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Stay well in the meantime. Bye for now.